absolutely think about cows in the northern Great Plains. Uh, think about the crude protein that's on the far left showing what's supplied. The white line is how that changes throughout the year. Obviously, in June is when we have the peak in terms of quality, and then that gradually decreases as we go into July, August, September. Kind of the red box there is a time when protein can really vary in terms of what a cow's nutrient requirements are and what's supplied based on when she calves and also based on the range that's available. Well, this is a classic slide here. It just shows that cows are fill limited in terms of what they can eat. And as protein available in the forage drops, it reduces the efficiency of those microbes in the rumen. Once we drop below about 7 8% crude protein, it reduces the amount of the body weight that they can eat. And so we want to be thinking about where that cow is in terms of nutrient requirements. And this is an example of where we've got some real low quality forage by supplementing some protein, we can actually improve the amount of low-quality forage that she can take in by feeding those microbes and improving their efficiency. So what we're saying here, Aaron, is I mean, normally we're kind of operating in maybe this area right in here. So if, if we've got a cow whose protein requirement is met, then she can eat this amount. If we've got a cow whose protein requirement is deficient, then she physically can't eat enough forage to meet her requirements. So she's down in this area. That's right. Okay. Well, I think as we think about the cow, knowing what you have, especially if you're thinking about feeding hay and supplementing, is really a critical piece of this. Uh, it's estimated less than 10% of today's beef producers know the drink content of their forage. Probably more so on their hay end, but it's also important to know where would my range be as I think about when my cows are grazing as well. And so being able to look at some data that would give you an indication of where that's at is important. Anything to add to that, Dallas? Uh, no, I don't think so. Other than in the Ranch Practicum School, we spend some time testing our hay and evaluating our hay and then putting together some strategies to how to use that hay and how to use our range to, to best meet what our requirements are. All right. Well, as we think about cow nutrient requirements, obviously feeding harvested feed is probably one of the most expensive parts of the cow's feed requirements of the year. And so, again, this is driving home that anything we can do to think about ways to reduce feed cost, harvested feed is one of the large areas we want to take a look at first. Sometimes it's an important part of our system and maybe uh, something we do need to do, but I think we need to take a careful look at it. Aaron, I know Don Adams and some other folks in your neck of the woods did an evaluation of several different ranches looking at differences in profitability. And the ranches that were highly profitable versus the ranches that were low, low profitable. And the thing that separated them the most is how much of this stuff they used. Those ranches that were highly profitable you generally fed the least amount of hay. And the ranches that were low profitable generally had a high hay requirement to winter that cow. Yeah. It's not just the, the hay itself that's expensive, it's all the infrastructure, equipment, and labor that goes with feeding that. So, knowing our forage and what we've got available to us really will help us think about meeting that cow's requirements. And frequently we say, oh, I know what my hay is. It's, it's probably around here. Well, there's a big range of what hay can be. Uh, this is from some forage analysis taken that shows the alfalfa can range in crude protein from 6% all the way up to almost 24%. That's a huge range. Same thing with prairie hay. On average, we think about it being in the high, low digits, around that 9%, but it could be anywhere from the low twos to almost 17%. Same thing with meadow hay. Down around 8% would be average, but 5 to 11 is the range. And so if we're on either end of that range, it could drastically affect the performance of the cattle and also what we may need to feed to meet their nutrient requirements. So a question I often get, Aaron, is how many pounds of a 30% cake do I need to feed to my cows when I've got them on a, a meadow hay that I've harvested? And uh, what would be your answer to that? My answer would be, I need to know the quality of your meadow hay. If you put that meadow hay up early and it's a real high quality, you may not need very much. If you got it cut real late and it's real mature, uh, you may need to supplement some protein. And so knowing what you got helps you make effective decisions. So, again, knowing the cow body condition score, where you are, where she's moving to, and what do you need to get her there? That, again, is the questions we really ask in the practicum as we think about what she needs. Some of you may be asking, well, what is cow body condition score? This is kind of a new thing to me. I'm not sure what that means. Really, 
Cal Body Condition Score is the, is the ability, or I should say ability, but the what that cow has in terms of fat on her back or body tissue. It's really one body condition score is equal to 80 to 120 pounds of live weight. So, for example, if we had a cow that's a body condition score 5 and she moves to a 6, let's say she's 1,100 pounds at a body condition score 5, we would estimate her to be close to 1,180 to 1,200 pounds in a body condition score 6. We think about how body condition score changes on the low end. The cow is primarily using muscle tissue if she's losing body condition score or gaining body condition score. Once she's over mid five in terms of body condition score, she's laying down fat. Uh, that's the tissue that's being deposited as she grows in terms of body condition score past the five and a half. When we think about cow body condition score, we're thinking about where is that cow at in terms of what she has in terms of cover. We look at really the as we move from the front to the back of the cow, we're looking at does she carry some fat in her brisket? And as we look at the cow up on her back, as we look at her spine and her ribs, does she have some cover there? And then we follow that out to her hooks, to her pins. Uh, does she have a lot of muscle showing and as well as some condition showing over her, her back and her flank area through her hooks and her pins? And so those are the areas we evaluate as we think about cow body condition score. These are just three cows left to right. The one on the far left is a three. The one in the middle is a five. And the one on the far right is a seven. Same cows, as you can see how the how fat and muscle changes on these cows as you move from left to right. We're going to go through these pretty quickly, but this is just a, a cow that's a body condition score four. You can see her spine and her ribs are really pronounced there, her hook bones. As you get behind her and look, uh, she is in, in poor shape, and this is a body condition score for a cow. So we fed this cow for a while, got her up to a five. You can see now that her spine is not as pronounced, neither are her ribs. You can still see her back uh, 12th and 13th rib. Those are still visible, but you can see as you look out to her flank and, and to her high quarter that she definitely filled in some muscle tissue there. We went ahead and fed that cow for the more we got her up to body condition score six. Now she's getting, beginning to have more of a blocky appearance. Her 12th and 13th rib really aren't very noticeable here. As we get behind her, uh, you can see that she's more rounded over her top. And uh, especially as we look at her, that flank area, she definitely filled out and had more of a blocky appearance. Finally, we're going to get to see this cow as she would be in a seven. Now she's really starting to get full appearance. As you look at her brisket and you look over her top and her ribs, She's really uh, filled out. You can't really see any evidence of her hooks or her pins being pronounced. As you stand behind her, she has really a blocky appearance. It's starting to show some fat tissue around her tail head and uh, just has a full appearance to her. So that just gives you an example of different body condition scores on a cow from four to a seven. Think about managing body condition score. Again, we've talked about this time of calving. When that cow calves and matching her nutrient requirements to the feed that's available uh, is really important to think about, both for, from a fetal growth standpoint and milk production. Time of weaning, uh, early weaning that cow shuts off milk production, and so we can use that as a tool to look at how that affects her body condition score. We may want to provide some supplementation sometimes in the form of protein to help her more effectively utilize forage that's available. There may be a time that we need to use substitution uh, to actually also meet her energy requirements and protein if uh, the forage available is not getting that done. And the last one is genetics. And frankly, uh, as we look at how genetics have changed over the last 30 years, these aren't your grandpa's cows. The cows that we have out today on our range almost in general, are all bigger in terms of mature size and also higher in terms of their milk production. And so we need to be aware of that and think about, do the genetics I have best meet the forage that I have available, and do they do that in a way that's most cost-effective?